We also have the bubble. The bubble is a great little launch that uh, I now rent a space here at the museum. My father built this 21-foot launch in our home workshop in 1945. And he put on it a temporary windshield, which is here. And here we are 70 years later, and I still got the temporary windshield. But this boat is beautiful. And the other day, I came in from a run in it, and I talked to a gentleman who owns the big power boat at our pier. He's trying to sell the big power boat for $14 million. But he told me he liked my lines the bubble just as much. So I was very uh, pleased to hear that. And we use the bubble to go out to my um, sailboat, which is a New York 40 uh, Ragosa. And uh, I showed you a picture before of the Ragosa building. This is another one of her building here in 1926. She won the Bermuda race in 1928. And I've had the best time with her. Here she is uh, last week at our mooring. And it's quite nice that we got this picture taken by a friend of ours, Captain Paul, which shows behind the home of Captain Nat and his model room here where he designed the uh, model that led to the construction of this boat in 1916. And this is a picture of um, last weekend when we were racing of the Ragosa, and you can see that uh, with the activity there, unfortunately one line overboard, but you can see what a great boat she is and how much fun we're having with her. We're going to be racing every weekend in August, and uh, so wish us luck. This is a crew in uh, one of the Opera House Cup races in Nantucket. I'll point out a couple of people here and tell you a little story. Uh, I had with me Tom Whitten, who's the president of North Sales. He and I sailed together in many America's Cups. And uh, he helped me start the boat. Didn't go too well because he didn't realize the boat didn't turn very easily. And this is uh, Katie Couric. And because we didn't start quite right, we had a little run-in with another boat at the starting line. We didn't actually foul them, but the guy thought we did. It was the fortune. So having sailed in Europe a certain amount, I decided to adopt the practice in Europe. I got out a bottle of wine, and I went over to the uh, potential protestee with a bottle of wine to offer him. But it's, I, I knew Don, the owner of the boat, and I thought it was going to be kind of tough. So Katie Couric said to me, would you like me to go along? And I said, yes, I, I would. So Katie and I went over in this skiff to the boat, and the owner wasn't very friendly. He didn't even invite us on board. We just had to stand in the skiff. And the wine bottle didn't seem to do any good either. So th the discussion wasn't going too well, but I said, oh, I said, by the way, I haven't introduced you. This is my friend, uh, Katie Couric. He said, that's not Katie Couric. Well, his crew behind him said, of course it's Don, that is Katie Couric. Well, he just evaporated, the whole protest was given up and um, everything's just fine. So if Katie's free again, I'd love to have her come race with us anytime. We had, I'll uh, just show you a little bit of this, a great adventure when the Ragosa, we sailed to England in 2001 and we were uh, four and a half years around England and Europe and the Mediterranean and the uh, Baltic. And we raced in uh, cows and uh, Robin Tattersall was here from way down south right here. And we won the whole regatta and I think Robin was one of the big reasons. He was up in the bow with every kind of barber hauler, um, tensioner, and I think his, Robin, your great dedication to trimming the sails in the bow was one of the reasons we won that regatta, of, of course. Then we went to um, St. Petersburg, Russia with the boat, which was great, and after that, the next year, we went to the fjords of uh, Norway. This is in the Sangha Fjord, and uh, if I just go back up last couple of slides here, uh, this is our boat, the Ragosa, that's the top of the mast in the Sangha Fjord. It gives you the sense of the immensity and beauty of this place with these waterfalls that come down to the fjord. And this is last week. Another boat I have is a stiletto. Now this boat was originally 
donated to the museum, but it got into very bad repair, and mechanical troubles and leaky decks and so forth. So I bought it from the museum and I put it into a one-year overhaul in my shop across the street. And we now drive it to Florida during the winter and we run it around here. It is 48 feet long and only seven feet wide. I can almost reach across. But it's a neat boat, uh, has a Yanmar diesel and can go 23 knots. And so we're having a lot of fun with that. So just in conclusion, you know, this story continues. Uh, here's another picture of one of the great schooners. And uh, it's all because of these gentlemen, Mr. J.B. Harrisoff and Nathaniel Green Harrisoff. But we're still at it. This is an idea of mine. This was something I developed uh, many years ago, but it was the, to be the rig of the future. And it had uh, flat top mainsail, uh, vents in the sails, which now are in the wings that they use in the America's Cup catamarans. And uh, I also have uh, turbulent stimulators on the lee side of the jib. That hasn't been happened yet, but probably will. So. We continue to try to think ahead. We also make mistakes, but just keep on and try to develop new things and make them work. Thank you all very much. <laughs>